dire team pick. Terror played. Any sentries, the couriers are busy ferrying uh, consumables to the mid lane. So we'll watch the movements for them later on. Now with that vision, at least uh, 343 knows he can get up in uh, Keizu's face on this off lane. But this is also like, okay, Batrider, open wounds as well. He's already got the sticky nade palms up, so 343, uh, he's, gonna, he's still going to keep up. This first one, Fnatic will actually claim it on the bottom lane after Batrider tries to get a little bit too aggressive. Well, it doesn't scan out no diggity's movement because they were smoked up. However, so Keizu has six. broken out, but it's mid one who's pushed up a little bit too far. So Yapsaw starts him with a shackle. Sidron has the magic missile still available. They burn through the shield. And Ember Spirit will drop down, so no diggity, they'll level it up. Rotates over and then spirits himself away. Not sure if fully intentional, but Koifer was also rotating to do something about him. Syndrome on bottom lane, meanwhile, open wounds over on him. Just a little bit too close, and Mushi's Rage will make sure that magic missile doesn't stand between him and... ...to play defensively and react to Fnatic's movements and try and dodge those ganks. Otherwise, they're going to fall incredibly far behind in this early Top lane, Ember Spirit's going to come and join the fight. The status from the jungle is actually trying to help out. So not think right now is Yapsaw on the front line. He is going to go down, but at the cost of the Ember Spirit, with Sinner and Ear arriving at the right time, Ohio still trying to retreat out, consumes up one of the fairy fires. Sindarin has no more stun available, however, so Ohio can just... Slight little misplay there from mid one, not getting the searing chains off the first fire room, so we have to use a second fire room aggressively, and that's just going to finish here. One of the five the troll trap over on Cinder, and Mushi was waiting inside of it. DJ barely survives getting back to the tree line. Hero now also on the rumble with the spirit fall from mid one. The stun that goes to work from Hero. Mushi's going to drop down. Mid one will still be able to kill off Yapsaw, who locked him in a little bit with the shackles, but now Hero, no way to escape from this. Mid one will mop up the pieces. But it's still a very costly fight going a, a couple of ways there. Yeah, nine minutes of his armlet. Man, he's strong and good at fighting. That, that thunder, if not for that thunder, that would just be completely one side of the uh, He may, he doesn't even kill us. DJ can get the last attack off. It looks like Ohio with the roar is going to lock him in. Keep there. Doesn't have any points in the Moonlight Shadow yet as well, which could have maybe been a safe. He could be looking at a... A pick here soon, he's but TPing to tier 2. There's a lot of counterplay for this, if a higher edge roll. There's the Hex Master, more down 3 4 3, he's trapped inside of it. It'll be a 1 for 1 trade off, but now the last two over on Muji, wasting a lot of that rage time and Hera sitting on the sidelines, but they couldn't actually stop him from infesting into the Dire Creek Wave. You're gonna lose as well the Marana inside the Radiant Jungle of DJ. They've still got a little bit of direct. Okay, no, Metamorph about to wear off. And without Surf Mods or Metamorph, this is. At best, the T1 tower, but Fnatic maybe, yeah, they're looking to contest this one. Yeah, here comes the TP, it's the Ember Spirit coming in from the side, Sidra and Ward up at the very, very start, and wow, mid one jumps further, Yapsaw still getting the shackles off, but that flame guard burning through the two supports of No Diggity, as Sidra and Yapsaw will fall mid one once more, spiriting forward, Hero has to create a couple of copies and get himself out of there, impossible to start steering chains again, mid one's on top of it, and Hex also arriving from 3 4 3 meaning there is no chance for a Sun Double, this is for now. He wants to maybe try and maximize its duration in a teamfight scenario, and Fnatic is going to have to react to oh, but they last two over on a 10-4, because they know Mushi is sitting inside of it, trying to scatter it out, he'll be swapped back down again, they've got the wave of terror, and the armor toggle will not be successful, now mid one, however, the side of fist, they're all grouped up, but the arrow, twice fought, only kills off the necro block, but you got the two over on Koifa, Yapsaw runs back inside the pit, Roshan's still low, Keiji wants to TP himself out, this one is Yapsaw, shackles over on mid one, Master Forge, remember they're still inside the pit, but they're quite terrible against Roshan, but look, damage, Mid one is just at that stage of the game where Ember Spirit is just so high level that he can just win any fight in the game but he lets you focus the first and down and it's mid one now with an A to get that initiation off, drag him back and then they can lock him down. And you can use the BS, you can use the Shaman, disengage, set up for another target. It's always going to be hard to get that clean initiation when Beastmaster has vision, he's found terribly down in the jungle. Uh, with a roar that is going to isolate him out perfectly. DP supports on the way from Syndra, and he might get there in time for a swap. No, he will not. In fact, he ends up just cancelling his DP and staying on the bottom. The Fnatic actually have, like, a force next to the secret shop for Keizu. Oh, there's your blink. Hex, it was the Hawk giving the vision. Yapsaw comes in with his own Hex and the Master from more down. He'll take up the roar. The Meg Charge gonna help the sustain coming in from Fnatic. His fight splitting up, but already two heroes down for no diggity. Syndra is going to be the third one to join him. And there's nothing Coinfer can do like they do. They've got three insta stuns in Raw, Impale, as well as the oh, Searing Here chains. they come. 
There's an infest inside the dark troll, some sort of a the blink up. Who do they go on first? It's the Ember Spirit Keizu. He can't get the last two off before the flame guys trigger the even Yapso taking out the fight by the raw. They're gonna lose two, they're gonna lose more, they've lost three. The Doom's on point for we'll to hide up in the tree line. And the only hero who's able to escape is Era back to his own jungle. Koifer will die in the tree line. And no diggity. If that smoke play worked, it would have been used last They lose that 5v4 yep. fight. So that's just I mean Fnatic playing around their advantages, not giving any opportunity to get Diggity back in this game. And again, we've seen time and time again, Batrider tries to blink last to initiate. We've seen the, the Impaled stop him getting the, getting the initiate up. We've seen the Zest right now by Mushi. Moving in towards the top right. So no, Diggity have no choice. They have to come back and try and fight this. Even though they can't take five on five fights, so they, they have to try and give it a crack. So here into Metamorphosis, mid one. Very quickly down the terrible can find the kill. Mid one's gonna find back to come forth, but now it's Ohio and no diggity. They've actually managed to bring down two cores, but the money from Fnatic is allowing them to just keep this fight going. The, the buyback, did you almost be happy with what you've got? Yeah, you, you, you could be happy, but you could be even more excited to get another oh, that's pickle done. too. And the arrow is flying in, are they going to dodge it? No, DJ walks into it, but Mushi will arrive. The fight for Syrian Chains helping to kill off Cinderin. And 3-4-3 three, three leads Yamko keep him out, but now they put down the wards, and Mushi will die. He tried to infest himself away to safety, but it was unsuccessful. So no look up and try and get a good bad initiation, but it's going to come too late. Fnatic just kill Roach a bit too fast with the minus armor and death way to end this all for us. So here's the question, does no diggity still make the most out of this smoke? and was instantly pinged out by Fnatic, oh. so they knew that Oops. no diggity were moving under the cover of smoke. Cinderin wants to TP out, but the Hawk is right on top of him. So at this point, they just uh, leave Cinderin and get the hell out. Be probably a good call. One way to look at it. <laughs> Bottom lane, yeah. Koifer, steering chains on him. He's already used Leaf, he can't blink away, and then go for a double control. Keizu, the blink, roar, and then finger of death. Him up very quickly, he wouldn't fully commit to a fight. And when you've got this big of a farm advantage as an Ember Spirit, you're actually pretty good at just kind of staying oh, on the yeah, oh. They use the Hawk as bait. He walked up just to deep water. Now Mushi swap the thing to hit for town, but Cinder explodes to the finger of death. Fanatic want to move out a little bit further, even though DJ's in very, very deep. Hero's going to be zoomed up, but he's very happy with that. He'll take it out. Like, maybe not so great because he can't create his illusions up triggering metamorphosis, but at least be able to survive. This will be at least one lane of practice. With Mushi having an Aegis, there's a good chance for Nag to swing their way towards this top lane. And with no support controls, literally Batrider is your only stun available. We're getting a Blink Lasso over on this group. Lion's probably going to be the primary problem for him, but then he also gets the Searing Chains problem. But it will actually be a double lane of rags and the jump in is DJ with the war stomp going on point for the stun there from the lion. So Mirana is down, buyback is available, and it's kind of all or nothing right now. So Coif is up, you got Cinder and also alive. So TP forward, they want to keep Mushi under control. Rasu and stun everything they've got. Mushi can't invest, he can't get away. They will be able to find one with a short range arrow into DJ that will hold him in position just long enough for Shadow Sharma to actually get over 1k gold for finding that kill. We really want Lion initiating the start of the fight, but not too big a deal. I was actually waiting for it to be in Ohio at that Blink Roar yeah. Necro Book, but the Necro Books are being expensed a little bit earlier. So they can just force into the tower, and now they're just jumping. DJ and mid one runs off a 3 4 3 bit there. Oh, Mushi's just along for the ride. He's not even jumping out. He's just watching his team win the game at the moment. Waiting for the right opportunity, and maybe that's it. Yapsaw's initiation. He jumps out, the Shaka will be there. Yapsaw just explodes. You already walked back over on the bat rider. Quirk is going to go down as well. This game is over. You're going to lose every lane of ranks here. You've got no buybacks up on anyone, and there's the call out from Cinderin. GG, Fnatic, a commanding performance here in game one. Yeah, yeah. Eric just spent the entire fight waiting for Doom to wear off so he can just pop his metamorphosis. And they invested all this time in a Terraplay too. Even at the late game with a kind of comparable net worth to some of the Fnatic cores, wasn't really able to do a whole lot in the fight. There's just too much control, too many lockdown answers with the Raw, the Lion, got Doom as well every single fight. So they just Doom the Terrorblade, then ignore him. They kill everyone else. There's Shadow Shaman Ven, two very squishy supports that never really took off. And the biggest problem, though, goes very much back to the start. That offlane Batrider just completely shut down, giving up the yep. first blood, and then he could never find his level two. And the supports.